cat hair games. Mountain, cat, cat mountain, cougar, mountain lion. Train the muscles, not the joints. So welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how many sets should you do? Because it's the age old question. Everybody's always asking how many sets, Jason? How many exercises? How many this, how many that? And of course, I always answer, I have the templates on my website. I have the training programs on there of how I structure workout programs. So if you're looking for a template, I have it on my website, naturalglantbodybuilding.com. Now, that said, if you haven't clicked subscribe so far and received notifications, you have done a severe injustice to yourself and please do so right now, okay? Just click the bell, click the subscribe, very easy to do. That way we can keep in touch. And now we are best buddies. I bet you you're happy about that. So how many sets should you do? Well, this will depend on your frequency in your training. And some people like to do 10, 15 sets for a body part when they're training or 20 sets sometimes. Uh, and other people like to do three or four sets or two sets or one set. I mean, I've had some people say, hey, anybody that does more than one set is crazy. But in my opinion, anywhere from three sets to around 12 sets is usually normal for a body part to train. Now, that said, when I'm training a body part every single day, you'll see me do about two sets, three sets of work sets for a body part. Say I'm doing a five day a week and I'm doing the body part five days a week and I'm super gung ho. And you can see an example of this in the Pushing the Limits training series that I did. It's in a playlist, so you can watch that. I trained every body part every day for a week or so just to see what would happen. Now, the bottom line is, is that if you're gonna be training frequently and you're doing three sets per body part and you're gonna be training that body part five days a week, yeah, you're gonna overtrain. You can overtrain from that. I mean, not always, but you can. If you do it for long enough and you're intense enough, there are some ways to offset that. I mean, such as changing up the rep ranges, making sure you're not going too heavy and all that sort of thing. But I would not recommend training like that all the time. Oh, if I was fatter, this would be good. Do that full range and it would look like a beanbag. Yeah. Now, if you're gonna be training the body part three days a week, yeah, you might be training anywhere from four sets to eight sets per body part, or maybe 10 sets sometimes. Because you train the body part three days a week, you get about a, a day rest in between. And if you're training the body part just once a week, 10 to 20 sets could sometimes be on the docket for you, right? When you get in the gym, you might need to do 10 to 20 sets because you're basically saying, I have a whole week to recover from that body part. Now, like I've said before, stimulating the body differently such as doing two days a week training, three days a week training, five days a week uh, body part training, it has a different effect on the physical body. So just because you save up all your sets to do that one training for the month and you do like 100 sets in your training program for that one workout you do a month, that doesn't mean that's gonna be the same type of stress on the system as training three days a week and by the time you add up all the sets at the end of the month, you've got 100 sets, right? So it's not the same. And if anything, I would say it's not effective because one could argue that you have to stimulate properly. So if you're cutting an arm off, that's a different type of stimulation than just getting a scratch, right? You know, one you can recover from, one you don't really recover from, you just receive trauma. Well, it's kind of the same thing. I found that little bits of stimulus over the long haul seem to be more effective when it comes down to stimulating overall muscle growth and getting that system going. How you disperse the stress on your body is up to you. And anywhere from a three day to four day split or two day split or a one day split, I mean, depending on the person can work for you and you can disperse in your days off depending on what you need, right? If I'm training a, a whole body type workout and I'm doing that four or five days a week, yeah, I'm taking probably two days off a week if I'm gonna be doing that because it's quite stressful on the body to be training a body part five days in a week, all your body parts, your entire body five days a week. So you're definitely gonna need at least one to two days off to do that. But yeah, in the end, it's, it's up to you. But if you're feeling super sore or if your joints are getting inflamed, you start feeling tight in the tendons and all this, yeah, you may need those extra days off or maybe you're training too frequently or training too much volume. But yeah, generally speaking, if you train a body part three days a week, anywhere from four sets to, to eight or nine sets, maybe 10 sets even, that, that could be on the docket for you. That could be effective. And I've done anywhere from four sets to sometimes 10 sets and I've, I've experimented with this. So yeah. I hope this helps you out. I hope this gives you a kind of an idea of how many sets you should be doing in your training. But in the end, the answer really is enough. Enough sets to stimulate your body, enough sets to stimulate some sort of adaptive response, and enough sets so that you are a mountain after your finished training. Thanks a lot for watching. And if you need to get hold of me, just go to naturalglantbodybuilding.com and thanks to the Patreon supporters and take care for now. Again.